Birds from The Pelican Island by James Montgomery From The World's Best Poetry, Volume 5 Nature, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Birds from The Pelican Island Birds, the free tenants of land, air, and ocean, Their forms all symmetry, their motions grace, in plumage delicate and beautiful thick without burden close as fishes scales or loose as full-grown poppies to the breeze with wings that might have had a soul within them they bore their owners by such sweet enchantment birds small and great of endless shapes and colors here flew and perched there swam and dived at pleasure watchful and agile uttering voices wild and harsh yet in accordance with the waves upon the beach the wind in caverns moaning or winds and waves abroad upon the water some sought their food among the finny shoals swift darting from the clouds emerging soon with slender captives glittering in their beaks these in recesses of steep crags constructed their airies inaccessible and trained their hardy broods to forage in all weathers others more gorgeously apparelled dwelt among the woods on nature's daintiest feeding herbs seeds and roots or ever on the wing pursuing insects through the boundless air in hollow trees or thickets these concealed their exquisitely woven nests where lay their callow offspring quiet as the down on their own breasts till from her search the dam with laden bill returned and shared the meal among her clamorous suppliants all agape then cowering o'er them with expanded wings she felt how sweet it is to be a mother of these a few with melody untaught turned all the air to music within hearing themselves unseen while bolder quisters on loftiest branches strained their clarion pipes and made the forest echo to their screams discordant yet there was no discord there but tempered harmony all tones combining in the rich confluence of ten thousand tongues to tell of joy and to inspire it who could hear such concert and not join in chorus end of poem this recording is in the public domain to the cuckoo by john logan from the world's best poetry volume five nature part two read for librivox dot org by sonia to the cuckoo hail beauteous stranger of the grove thou messenger of spring now heaven repairs thy rural seat and woods thy welcome sing what time the daisy decks the green thy certain voice we hear hast thou a star to guide thy path or mark the rolling year delightful visitant with thee i hail the time of flowers and hear the sound of music sweet from birds among the bowers the schoolboy wandering through the wood to pull the primrose gay starts the new voice of spring to hear and imitates thy lay what time the pea puts on the bloom thou fliest thy vocal veil an annual guest in other lands another spring to hail sweet bird thy bower is ever green thy sky is ever clear thou hast no sorrow in thy song no winter in thy year oh could i fly i'd fly with thee we'd make with joyful wing our annual visit over the globe companions of the spring End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. T. 
to the cuckoo by william wordsworth from the world's best poetry volume five nature part two read for LibriVox.org by lian yao to the cuckoo o oh, blithe newcomer i have heard i hear thee and rejoice a cuckoo shall i call thee bird or but a wandering voice while i am lying on the grass thy twofold shout i hear from hill to hill it seems to pass at once far off and near though babbling only to the veil of sunshine and of flowers thou bringest unto me a tale of visionary hours thrice welcome darling of the spring even yet thou art to me no bird but an invisible thing a voice a mystery the same whom in my schoolboy days i listened to that cry which made me look a thousand ways in bush and tree and sky to seek thee did i often rove through woods and on the green and thou wert still a hope a love still longed for never seen and i can listen to thee yet can lie upon the plain and listen till i do beget that golden time again o oh, blessed birds the earth we pace again appears to be an unsubstantial fairy place that is fit home for thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain hark hark the lark from Cymbeline, Act Two, Scene Three, by William Shakespeare. From The World's Best Poetry, Volume Five, Nature, Part Two. Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Hark, hark the lark from Cymbeline, Act Two, Scene Three. Hark, hark the lark at heaven's gate sings, and Phoebus gins arise his steeds to water at those springs on chaliced flowers that lies and winking merry buds begin to ope their golden eyes with everything that pretty bin my lady sweet arise 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 shakespeare end of poem this recording is in the public domain the lark ascending by george meredith from the world's best poetry volume five nature part two read for librivox dot org by jason in panama the lark ascending he rises and begins to round he drops the silver chain of sound of many links without a break in chirrup whistle slur and shake all intervolved and spreading wide like water dimples down a tide where ripple ripple over curls and eddy into eddy whirls a press of hurried notes that run so fleet they scarce are more than one yet changingly the trills repeat and linger ringing while they fleet sweet to the quick of the ear and dear to her beyond the handmaid ear who sits beside our inner springs too often dry for this he brings which seems the very jet of earth at sight of sun her music's mirth as up he wings the spiral stair a song of light and pierces air with fountain ardor fountain play to reach the shining tops of day and drink in everything discerned an ecstasy to music turned impelled by what his happy bill disperses drinking showering still unthinking save that he may give his voice the outlet there to live renewed in endless notes of glee so thirsty of his voice is he for all to hear and all to know that he is joy awake a glow the tumult of the heart to hear through pureness filtered crystal clear and know the pleasure sprinkled bright by simple singing of delight shrill irreflective unrestrained rapt ringing on the jet sustained without a break without a fall sweet silvery sheer lyrical perennial quavering up the cord like myriad dews of sunny sward 
that trembling into fullness shine and sparkle dropping argentine such wooing as the ear receives from zephyr caught in choric leaves of aspens when their chattering net is flushed to white with shivers wet and such the water spirits chime on mountain heights in morning's prime too freshly sweet to seem excess too animate to need a stress but wider over many heads the starry voice ascending spreads awakening as it waxes thin the best in us to him akin and every face to watch him raised puts on the light of children praised so rich our human pleasure ripes when sweetness on sincereness pipes though not he promised from the seas but only a soft ruffling breeze sweep glittering on a still content serenity in ravishment for singing till his heaven fills tis love of earth that he instills and ever winging up and up our valley is his golden cup and he the wine which overflows to lift us with him as he goes the woods and brooks the sheep and kine he is the hills the human line the meadows green the fallows brown the dreams of labor in the town he sings the sap the quickened veins the wedding song of sun and rains he is the dance of children thanks of sowers shout of primrose banks and eye of violets while they breathe all these the circling song will wreathe and you shall hear the herb and tree the better heart of men shall see shall feel celestially as long as you crave nothing save the song was never voice of ours could say our inmost in the sweetest way like yonder voice aloft and link all hearers in the song they drink our wisdom speaks from flailing blood our passion is too full in flood we want the key of his wild note of truthful in a tuneful throat the song seraphically free of taint of personality so pure that it salutes the sons the voice of one for millions in whom the millions rejoice for giving their one spirit voice yet men have we whom we revere now names and men still housing there whose lives by many a battle dint defaced and grinding wheels on flint yield substance though they sing not sweet for song is highest heaven to greet whom heavenly singing gives us new and spheres them brilliant in our blue from firmest base to farthest leap because their love of earth is deep and they are warriors in accord with life to serve and pass reward so touching purest and so heard in the brain's reflex of yon bird wherefore their soul in me or mine through self-forgetfulness divine in them that song aloft maintains to fill the sky and thrill the plains with showerings drawn from human stores as he to silence nearer soars extends the world at wings and dome more spacious making more our home till lost on his aerial rings in light and then the fancy sings george meredith end of poem this recording is in the public domain to the skylark by william wordsworth from the world's best poetry volume five nature part two read for librivox dot org by craig franklin to the skylark ethereal minstrel pilgrim of the sky dost thou despise the earth where cares abound or while the wings aspire our heart and i both with thy nest upon the dewy ground thy nest which thou canst drop into at will those quivering wings compose that music still to the last point of vision and beyond mount daring warbler that love prompted strain twixt thee and thine a never failing bond thrills not the less the bosom of the plain yet mightest thou seem proud privilege to sing all independent of the leafy spring leave to the nightingale her shady wood a privacy of glorious light is thine 
whence thou dost pour upon the world a flood of harmony with instinct more divine type of the wise who saw but never roam true to the kindred points of heaven and home end of poem this recording is in the public domain To the Skylark by Percy Bysshe Shelley From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia To the Skylark Hail to thee, blithe spirit, bird thou never wert, That from heaven or near it pourest thy full heart In profuse strains of unpremeditated art. Higher still and higher from the earth thou springest like a cloud of fire the blue deep thou wingest and singing still dost soar and soaring ever singest in the golden lightning of the setting sun over which clouds are brightening thou dost float and run like an unbodied joy whose race is just begun the pale purple even melts around thy flight like a star of heaven in the broad daylight thou art unseen but yet i hear thy shrill delight keen as are the arrows of that silver sphere whose intense lamp narrows in the white dawn clear until we hardly see we feel that it is there all the earth and air with thy voice is loud as when night is bare from one lonely cloud the moon rains out her beams and heaven is overflowed what thou art we know not what is most like thee from rainbow clouds there flow not drops so bright to see as from thy presence showers a rain of melody like a poet hidden in the light of thought singing hymns unbidden till the world is wrought to sympathy with hopes and fears it heeded not like a high-born maiden in a palace tower soothing her love-laden soul in secret hour with music sweet as love which overflows her bower like a glow-worm golden in a dell of dew scattering unbeholden its aerial hue among the flowers and grass which screen it from the view like a rose embowered in its own green leaves by warm winds deflowered till the scent it gives makes faint with too much sweet these heavy-winged thieves sound of vernal showers on the twinkling grass rain awakened flowers all that ever was joyous and fresh and clear thy music doth surpass teach us sprite or bird what sweet thoughts are thine I have never heard praise of love or wine that panted forth a flood of rapture so divine chorus hymeneal or triumphant chant matched with thine would be all but an empty vaunt a thing wherein we feel there is some hidden want what objects are the fountains of thy happy strain what fields or waves or mountains what shapes of sky or plain what love of thine own kind what ignorance of pain with thy clear keen joyance languor cannot be shadow of annoyance never come near thee thou lovest but never knew love's sad satiety waking or asleep thou of death must deem things more true and deep than we mortals dream or how could thy notes flow in such a crystal stream we look before and after and pine for what is not our sincerest laughter with some pain is fraught our sweetest songs are those that tell of saddest thought yet if we could scorn hate and pride and fear if we were things born not to shed a tear i know not how thy joy we ever should come near better than all measures of delightful sound better than all treasures that in books are found thy skill to poet were thou scorner of the ground 
teach me half the gladness that thy brain must know such harmonious madness from my lips would flow the world should listen then as i am listening now end of poem this recording is in the public domain the skylark by james hogg from the world's best poetry volume five nature part two read for librivox dot org by thomas peter the skylark bird of the wilderness blithesome and cumberless sweet be thy matin o'er moorland and lea emblem of happiness blessed is thy dwelling place o oh, to abide in the desert with thee wild is thy lay and loud far in the downy cloud love gives it energy love gave it birth where on thy dewy wing where art thou journeying thy lay is in heaven thy love is on earth o'er fell and fountain sheen o'er moor and mountain green o'er the red streamer that heralds the day over the cloudlet dim over the rainbow's rim musical cherub soar singing away then when the gloaming comes low in the heather blooms sweet will thy welcome and bed of love be emblem of happiness blessed is thy dwelling place o oh, to abide in the desert with thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain the little beech bird by richard henry dana from the world's best poetry volume five Nature Part Two, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Little Beach Bird. Thou little bird, thou dweller by the sea, why takest thou its melancholy voice? Why, with that brooding cry over the waves, dost thou fly? Oh, rather, bird, with me through the fair land rejoice. Thy flitting form comes ghostly, dim and pale as driven by a beating storm at sea thy cry is weak and scared as if thy mates had shared the doom of us thy wail what does it bring to me thou calls along the sand and haunts the surge restless and sad as if in strange accord with motion and with roar of waves that drive to shore one spirit did ye urge the mystery the word of thousands thou both sepulchre and pall old ocean art a requiem over the dead from out thy gloomy cells a tale of mourning tells tells of man's woe and fall his sinless glory fled then turn thee little bird and take thy flight where the complaining sea shall sadness bring thy spirit nevermore come quit with me the shore for gladness and delight where birds of summer sing end of poem this recording is in the public domain the sandpiper by celia thaxter from the world's best poetry volume five nature part two read for librivox dot org by craig franklin the sandpiper across the narrow beach we flit one little sandpiper and i 
and fast I gather bit by bit the scattered driftwood, bleached and dry. The wild waves reach their hands for it, the wild wind raves, the tide runs high. As up and down the beach we flit, one little sandpiper, one little sandpiper, and I. Above our heads the sullen clouds scud black and swift across the sky, like silent ghosts in misty shrouds, stand out the white light houses high. Almost as far as I can reach, I see the close reefed vessels fly, as fast we flit along the beach, one little sandpiper and I. I watch him as he skims along, uttering his sweet and mournful cry. He starts not at my fitful song, or flash of fluttering drapery. He has no thought of any wrong. He scans me with a fearless eye. Staunch friends are we, well tried and strong, the little sandpiper and I. Comrade, where wilt thou be tonight, when the lucid storm breaks furiously? My driftwood fire will burn so bright, to what warm shelter canst thou fly? I do not fear for thee, though wrath the tempest rushes through the sky, for are we not God's children both, thou little sandpiper, and I? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To a Waterfowl by William Cullen Bryant from the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 2, read for LibriVox.org, by Jason in Panama. To a Waterfowl Whither, midst falling dew, while glow the heavens with the last steps of day, far through their rosy depths, dost thou pursue thy solitary way? Vainly the fowler's eye might mark thy distant flight to do thee wrong as darkly painted on the crimson sky thy figure floats along seek'st thou the plashy brink of weedy lake or marge of river wide or where the rocking billows rise and sink on the chafed ocean side there is a power whose care teaches thy way along that pathless coast the desert and inimitable air lone wandering but not lost all day thy wings have fanned at that far height the cold thin atmosphere yet stoop not weary to the welcome land though the dark night is near and soon that toil shall end soon shalt thou find a summer home and rest and scream along thy fellows reeds shall bend soon o'er thy sheltered nest thou art gone the abyss of heaven hath swallowed up thy form yet on my heart deeply hath sunk the lesson thou hast given and shall not soon depart he who from zone to zone guides through the boundless sky thy certain flight in the long way that i must tread alone will lead my steps aright william cullen bryant end of poem this recording is in the public domain. To the Nightingale by John Milton From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao To the Nightingale O oh, Nightingale! That on yon bloomy spray who warblest at eve when all the woods are still, thou with fresh hopes the lover's heart dost fill, while the jolly hours lead on propitious May. Thy liquid notes, that close the eye of day, first heard before the shallow cuckoo's bill, portend success in love. Oh, if Jove's will have linked that amorous power to thy soft lay, now timely sing. Ere the rude bird of hate foretell my hopeless doom in some grove nigh, as thou from year to year hast sung too late for my relief, yet hadst no reason why. Whether the muse or love call thee his mate, both them I serve, and of their train am I. End of poem. 
This recording is in the public domain. The Nightingale's Song by Richard Crashaw From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia The Nightingale's Song From Music's Duel now westward Saul had spent the richest beams of noon's high glory when hard by the streams of tiber on the scene of a green plat under protection of an oak there sat a sweet lute's master in whose gentle airs he lost the day's heat and his own hot cares close in the covert of the leaves there stood a nightingale come from the neighbouring wood the sweet inhabitant of each glad tree their muse their siren harmless siren she there stood she listening and did entertain the music's soft report and mould the same in her own murmurs that whatever mood his curious fingers lend her voice made good this lesson too she gives them back her supple breast thrills out sharp airs and staggers in a warbling doubt of dallying sweetness hovers over her skill and folds in waved notes with a trembling bill the pliant series of her slippery song then starts she suddenly into a throng of short thick sobs whose thundering volleys float and roll themselves over her lubric throat in panting murmurs stilled out of her breast that ever bubbling spring the sugared nest of her delicious soul that there does lie bathing in streams of liquid melody music's best seed plot when in ripened airs a golden-headed harvest fairly rears his honey dropping tops ploughed by her breath which there reciprocally laboureth in that sweet soil it seems a holy choir sounded to the name of great apollo's lyre whose silver roof rings with the sprightly notes of sweet-lipped angel imps that swill their throats in cream of morning helicon and then prefer soft anthems to the ears of men to woo them from their beds still murmuring that men can sleep while they their matins sing most divine service whose so early lay prevents the eyelids of the blushing day there might you hear her kindle her soft voice in the close murmur of a sparkling noise and lay the groundwork of her hopeful song still keeping in the forward stream so long till a sweet whirlwind striving to get out heaves her soft bosom wanders round about and makes a pretty earthquake in her breast till the fledged notes at length forsake their nest fluttering in wanton shoals and to the sky winged with their own wild echoes prattling fly she opes the floodgate and lets loose a tide of streaming sweetness which in state doth ride on the waved back of every swelling strain rising and falling in a pompous train and while she thus discharges a shrill peal of flashing airs she qualifies their zeal with the cool epode of a graver note thus high thus low as if her silver throat would reach the brazen voice of war's hoarse bird her little soul is ravished and so poured into loose ecstasies that she is placed above herself music's enthusiast end of poem this recording is in the public domain Philomena by Matthew Arnold From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5 Nature, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org By Thomas Peter Philomena Hark! Ah! The nightingale! The tawny-throated! Hark! From that moonlit cedar what a burst! What triumph! Hark! What pain! A wanderer from a Grecian shore, Still, after many years, In distant lands, Still nourishing in thy bewildered brain That 
wild unquenched deep sunken old world pain say will it never heal and can this fragrant lawn with its cool trees and night and the sweet tranquil thames and the moonshine and the dew to thy racked heart and brain afford no balm dost thou to-night behold here through the moonlight on this english grass the unfriendly palace in the thracian wild dost thou again peruse with hot cheeks and seared eyes the too clear web and thy dumb sister's shame dost thou once more essay thy flight and feel come over thee poor fugitive the feathery change once more and once more make resound with love and hate triumph and agony lone dolus and the high cephesian veil listen eugenia how thick the bursts come crowding through the leaves again thou hearest eternal passion eternal pain end of poem this recording is in the public domain on musical birds from the task book one by william cowper from the world's best poetry volume five nature part two Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao. On Musical Birds Ten thousand warblers cheer the day, And one the live-long night, Nor these alone, whose notes nice-fingered art Must emulate in vain, But cawing rooks, and kites that swim sublime In still repeated circles, screaming loud, The jay, the pie, and even the boding owl, that hails the rising moon have charms for men sounds inharmonious in themselves and harsh yet heard in scenes where peace for ever reigns and only there please highly for their sake end of poem this recording is in the public domain Robert of Lincoln by William Cullen Bryant From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin as the narrator And Thomas Peter as the bobolink Robert of Lincoln Merrily swinging on briar and weed Near to the nest of his little dame Over the mountain side or mead Robert of Lincoln is telling his name Bobolink, bobolink, spink, spank, spink, snug and safe is that nest of ours, hidden among the summer flowers. Chee, chee, chee. Robert of Lincoln is gaily dressed, wearing a bright black wedding coat. White are his shoulders and white his crest, hear him call in his merry note. Bobolink, bobolink, spink, spank, spink, look what a nice new coat is mine sure there was never a bird so fine chee 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 robert of lincoln's quaker wife pretty and quiet with plain brown wings passing at home a patient life broods in the grass while her husband sings bobolink bobolink spink spank spink brood kind creature you need not fear thieves and robbers while i am here chee 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 modest and shy as a nun is she one weak chirp is her only note braggart and prince of braggarts is he pouring boasts from his little throat bobolink bobolink spink spank spink never was i afraid of man catch me cowardly knaves if ye can chee 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 six white eggs on a bed of hay flecked with purple a pretty sight there as the mother sits all day Robert is singing with all his might. Bobolink, bobolink, spink, spank, spink. Nice good wife that never goes out, keeping house while I frolic about. 
chee 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 soon as the little ones chip the shell six wide mouths are open for food robert of lincoln bestirs him well gathering seed for the hungry brood bobolink bobolink spink spank spink this new life is likely to be hard for a gay young fellow like me chee 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 robert of lincoln at length is made sober with work and silent with care off is his holiday garment laid half forgotten that merry air bobolink bobolink spink spank spink nobody knows but my mate and i where our nest and our nestlings lie chee 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 summer wanes the children are grown fun and frolic no more he knows robert of lincoln's a humdrum crone off he flies and we sing as he goes bobolink bobolink spink spank spink when you can pipe that merry old strain robert of lincoln come back again chee 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 end of poem this recording is in the public domain the o lincoln family by wilson flagg from the world's best poetry volume five nature part two read for librivox dot org by sonia as the narrator lian yao as the flock of birds and craig franklin as the bobolink the o lincoln family a flock of merry singing birds were sporting in the grove some were warbling cheerily and some were making love there were bobolinken waterlinken winter siebel conkweedle a livelier set was never led by taper pipe or fiddle crying phew shoo waddlinken see see bobolinken down among the tickle tops hiding in the buttercups i know the saucy chap i see his shining cap bobbing in the clover there see 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 up flies bobolinken perching on an apple tree startled by his rival's song quickened by his raillery soon he spies the rogue afloat curveting in the air and merrily he turns about and warns him to beware tis you that would a wooing go down among the rushes oh but wait a week till flowers are cheery wait a week and ere you marry be sure of a house we're in to tarry waterlink whiskerdink tom denny wait 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 every one's a funny fellow every one's a little mellow follow 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 over the hill and in the hollow merrily merrily there they hie now they rise and now they fly they cross and turn and in and out and down in the middle and wheel about with a phew shoo waddlinkin listen to me bobolinkin happy's the wooing that's speedily doing that's speedily doing that's merry and over with the bloom of the clover bobolinkin waddlinkin winter siebel follow follow me end of poem this recording is in the public domain to the lapland longspur by john burroughs from the world's best poetry volume five nature part two read for librivox dot org by thomas peter to the lapland longspur one o oh, thou northland bobolink looking over summer's brink up to winter worn and dim peering down from mountain rim something takes me in thy note quivering wing and bubbling throat something moves me in thy ways bird rejoicing in thy days in thy upward hovering flight in thy suit of black and white chestnut cape and circled crown in thy mate of speckled brown surely i may pause and think of my boyhood's bobolink two soaring over meadows wild greener pastures never smiled raining music from above full of rapture full of love frolic gay and debonair yet not all exempt from care for thy nest is in the grass and thou worriest as i pass 
but nor hand nor foot of mine shall do harm to thee or thine i musing only pause to think of my boyhood's bobolink three but no bobolink of mine ever sang o'er mead so fine starred with flowers of every hue gold and purple white and blue painted cup anemone jacob's ladder fleur de lis orchid harebell shooting star cranesbill lupin seen afar primrose poppy saxifrage pictured type on nature's page these and others here unnamed in northland gardens yet untamed deck the fields where thou dost sing mounting up on trembling wing while in wistful mood i think of my boyhood's bobolink four on unalaska's emerald lee on lonely isles in bering sea on far siberia's barren shore on north alaska's tundra floor at morn at noon in pallid night we heard thy song and saw thy flight while i sighing could but think of my boyhood's bobolink end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Bobolinks by Christopher Pierce Cranch from The World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 2, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. The Bobolinks When nature had made all her birds, with no more cares to think on, she gave a rippling laugh, and out there flew a bobolink on. She laughed again, out flew a mate a breeze of eden bore them across the fields of paradise the sunrise reddening o'er them incarnate sport and holiday they flew and sang forever their souls through june were all in tune their wings were weary never their tribe still drunk with air and light and perfume of the meadow go reeling up and down the sky in sunshine and in shadow one springs from out the dew-wet grass another follows after the morn is thrilling with their songs and peals of fairy laughter from out the marshes and the brook they set the tall reeds swinging and meet and frolic in the air half prattling and half singing when morning winds sweep meadowlands in green and russet billows and toss the lonely elm trees boughs and silver all the willows i see you buffeting the breeze or with its motion swaying your notes half drowned against the wind or down the current playing when far away o'er grassy flats where the thick wood commences the white-sleeved mowers look like specks beyond the zigzag fences and noon is hot and barn roofs gleam white in the pale blue distance i hear the saucy minstrels still in chattering persistence when eve her domes of opal fire piles round the blue horizon or thunder rolls from hill to hill a kyrie eliason still merriest of the merry birds your sparkle is unfading pied harlequins of june no end of song and masquerading what cadences of bubbling mirth too quick for bar and rhythm what ecstasies too full to keep coherent measure with them oh could i share without champagne or muscadel your frolic the glad delirium of your joy your fun unapostolic your drunken jargon through the fields your bobolinkish gabble your fine anacreontic glee your tipsy revellers babble nay let me not profane such joy with similes of folly no wine of earth could waken songs so delicately jolly o oh, boundless self-contentment voiced in flying airborne bubbles o oh, joy that mocks our sad unrest and drowns our earth-born troubles hope springs with you i dread no more despondency and dullness 
For good supreme can never fail that gives such perfect fullness. The life that floods the happy fields with song and light and color will shape our lives to richer states and heap our measures fuller. Christopher Pierce Cranch End of Poem This recording is in the public domain. The Mockingbird by Frank Lebby Stanton From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5 Nature, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao The Mockingbird He didn't know much music when first he come along And all the birds went wondering why he didn't sing a song They primped their feathers in the sun and sung their sweetest notes And music just come on the run from all their purty throats But still that bird was silent in summer time and fall he just sat still and listened and he wouldn't sing at all but one night when them songsters was tired out and still and the wind sighed down the valley and went creeping up the hill when the stars was all a-tremble in the dreamin' fields of blue and the daisy in the darkness felt the fallin' of the dew there come a sound of melody no mortal ever heard and all the birds seemed singing from the throat of one sweet bird. Then the other birds went maying in the land too far to call, for there weren't no use in staying when one bird could sing for all. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Blackbird by Alfred Lord Tennyson from the world's best poetry volume five nature part two read for librivox.org by craig franklin the blackbird o oh, blackbird sing me something well while all the neighbours shoot thee round i keep smooth plats of fruitful ground where thou mayst warble eat and dwell the espaliers and the standards all are thine the range of lawn and park the unnetted black hearts ripen dark all thine against the garden wall yet though i spare thee all the spring thy sole delight is sitting still with that gold dagger of thy bill to fret the summer geniting a golden bill the silver tongue cold february loved is dry plenty corrupts the melody that made thee famous once when young and in the sultry garden squares now thy flute notes are changed to course i hear thee not at all or hoarse as when a hawker hawks his wares take warning he that will not sing when yon sun prospers in the blue shall sing for want ere leaves are new caught in the frozen palms of spring end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Eagle A Fragment By Alfred Lord Tennyson From The World's Best Poetry Volume 5 Nature Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao The Eagle He clasps the crag with hooked hands Close to the sun in lonely lands Ringed with the azure world he stands the wrinkled sea beneath him crawls he watches from his mountain walls and like a thunderbolt he falls end of poem this recording is in the public domain the owl by brian waller proctor barry cornwell from the world's best poetry volume five nature part two Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Owl In the hollow tree, in the old grey tower, The spectral owl doth dwell. Dull, hated, despised in the sunshine hour, But at dusk he's abroad and well. Not a bird of the forest ever mates with him, 
all mock him outright by day but at night when the woods grow still and dim the boldest will shrink away oh when the night falls and roosts the fowl then then is the reign of the horned owl and the owl hath a bride who is fond and bold and loveth the wood's deep gloom and with eyes like the shine of the moonstone cold she awaiteth her ghastly groom not a feather she moves not a carol she sings as she waits in her tree so still but when her heart heareth his flapping wings she hoots out her welcome shrill oh when the moon shines and dogs do howl then then is the joy of the horned owl mourn not for the owl nor his gloomy plight the owl hath his share of good if a prisoner he be in the broad daylight he is lord in the dark green wood nor lonely the bird nor his ghastly mate they are each unto each a pride thrice fonder perhaps since a strange dark fate hath rent them from all beside so when the night falls and dogs do howl sing ho for the reign of the horned owl we know not alway who are kings by day but the king of the night is the bold brown owl end of poem this recording is in the public domain the dying swan by alfred lord tennyson from the world's best poetry volume five nature part two read for librivox dot org by lian yao the dying swan one the plain was grassy wild and bare wide wild and open to the air which had built up everywhere an underroof of doleful grey with an inner voice the river ran adown it floated a dying swan and loudly did lament it was the middle of the day ever the weary wind went on and took the reed tops as it went two some blue peaks in the distance rose and white against the cold white sky shone out their crowning snows one willow over the river wept and shook the wave as the wind did sigh above in the wind was a swallow chasing itself at its own wild will and far through the marish green and still the tangled watercourses slept shot over with purple and green and yellow three the wild swan's death hymn took the soul of that waste place with joy hidden in sorrow at first to the air the warble was low and full and clear and floating about the under sky prevailing in weakness the coronach stole sometimes afar and sometimes anear but anon her awful jubilant voice with a music strange and manifold flowed forth on a carol free and bold as when a mighty people rejoice with shawms and with cymbals and harps of gold and the tumult of their acclaim is rolled through the open gates of the city afar to the shepherd who watcheth the evening star and the creeping mosses and clambering weeds and the willow branches haw and dank and the wavy swell of the soughing reeds and the wave-worn horns of the echoing bank and the silvery marish flowers that throng the desolate creeks and pools among were flooded over with eddying song end of poem this recording is in the public domain the heathcock by joanna bailey 
From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 2, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. The Heathcock Good morrow to thy sable beak and glossy plumage, dark and sleek, thy crimson moon and azure eye, cock of the heath so wildly shy. I see thee slyly cowering through that wiry web of silvery dew that twinkles in the morning air, like casements of my lady fair. A maid there is in yonder tower, who, peeping from her early bower, half shows, like thee, her simple wile, her braided hair, and morning smile. The rarest things with wayward will, beneath the covert hide them still. The rarest things to break of day look shortly forth, and shrink away. A fleeting moment of delight I sunned me in her cheering sight. As short, I ween, the time will be that I shall parley hold with thee. Through Snowdon's red mist beams the day, the climbing herd-boy chants his lay, the gnat-flies dance their sunny ring, thou art already on the wing. Joanna Bailey End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Belfry Pigeon by Nathaniel Parker Willis From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5 Nature, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org By Thomas Peter The Belfry Pigeon On the cross-beam under the old south bell The nest of a pigeon is builded well In summer and winter that bird is there Out and in with the morning air I love to see him track the street with his wary eye and active feet, and I often watch him as he springs, circling the steeple with easy wings, till across the dial his shade has passed, and the belfry edge is gained at last. Tis a bird I love, with its brooding note, and the trembling throb in its mottled throat. There's the human look in its swelling breast and the gentle curve of its lowly crest. And I often stop with the fear I feel. He runs so close to the rapid wheel. Whatever is rung on that noisy bell, chime of the hour or funeral knell, the dove in the belfry must hear it well. When the tongue swings out to the midnight moon, when the sexton cheerly rings for noon, when the clock strikes clear at morning light, when the child is waked with nine at night, when the chimes play soft in the Sabbath air, filling the spirit with tones of prayer. Whatever tale in the bell is heard, he broods on his folded feet unstirred, or, rising half in his rounded nest, he takes the time to smooth his breast, then drops again with filmed eyes and sleeps as the last vibration dies. Sweet bird, I would that I could be a hermit in the crowd like thee, with wings to fly to wood and glen. Thy lot like mine is cast with men, and daily, with unwilling feet, I tread like thee the crowded street. But unlike me, when day is o'er, thou canst dismiss the world and soar, or at a half-felt wish for rest, Canst smooth the feathers on thy breast, And drop, forgetful, to thy nest. I would that, in such wings of gold, I could my weary heart upfold. I would I could look down unmoved, Unloving, as I am unloved, And while the world throngs on beneath, Smooth down my cares and calmly breathe, And never sad with other sadness, and never glad with others gladness listen unstirred to knell or chime and lapped in quiet bide my time end of poem this recording is in the public domain the english robin by harrison ware 
from the world's best poetry volume five nature part two read for LibriVox.org by leanne yao the english robin see yon robin on the spray look ye how his tiny form swells as when his merry lay gushes forth amid the storm though the snow is falling fast specking o'er his coat with white though loud roars the chilly blast and the evening's lost in night yet from out the darkness dreary cometh still that cheerful note praiseful eye and never weary is that little warbling throat thank him for his lesson's sake thank god's gentle minstrel there who when storms make others quake sings of days that brighter were end of home this recording is in the public domain asian birds by robert seymour bridges from the world's best poetry volume five nature part two read for librivox dot org by leanne yao asian birds in this may month by grace of heaven things shoot apace the waiting multitude of fair boughs in the wood how few days have arrayed their beauty in green shade what have i seen or heard it was the yellow bird sang in the tree he flew a flame against the blue upward he flashed again hark tis his heavenly strain another hush behold many like boats of gold from waving branch to branch their airy bodies launch what music is like this where each note is a kiss the golden willows lift their boughs the sun to sift their silken streamers screen the sky with veils of green to make a cage of song where feathered lovers throng how the delicious notes come bubbling from their throats full and sweet how they are shed like round pearls from a thread the motions of their flight are wishes of delight hearing their song i trace the secret of their grace ah oh, could i this fair time so fashion into rhyme the poem that i sing would be the voice of spring end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Scarlet Tanager by Joel Benton From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia The Scarlet Tanager A ball of fire shoots through the tamarack In scarlet splendor on voluptuous wings Delirious joy the pyrotechnist brings Who marks for us high summer's almanac How instantly the red coat hurtles back no fiercer flame has flashed beneath the sky note now the rapture in his cautious eye the conflagration lit along his track winged soul of beauty tropic in desire thy love seems alien in our northern zone thou givest to our green lands a burst of fire and callest back the fables we disown the hot equator thou mightst well inspire or stand above some eastern monarch's throne end of poem this recording is in the public domain the winged worshippers addressed to two swallows that flew into the chauncey place church during divine service by charles sprague from the world's best poetry volume five nature part two Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao. The Winged Worshippers Gay, guiltless pair, what seek ye from the fields of heaven? Ye have no need of prayer, ye have no sins to be forgiven. Why perch ye here, where mortals to their maker bend? Can your pure spirits fear the God ye never could offend? ye never knew the crimes for which we come to weep 
penance is not for you blessed wanderers of the upper deep to you tis given to wake sweet nature's untaught lays beneath the arch of heaven to chirp away a life of praise then spread each wing far far above o'er lakes and lands and join the choirs that sing in yon blue dome not reared with hands or if ye stay to note the consecrated hour teach me the airy way and let me try your envied power above the crowd on upward wings could i but fly i'd bathe in yon bright cloud and seek the stars that gem the sky to a heaven indeed through fields of trackless light to soar on nature's charms to feed and nature's own great god adore end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Departure of the Swallow by William Howitt From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama The Departure of the Swallow And is the swallow gone? Who beheld it? Which way sailed it? Farewell bade it none? No mortal saw it go, But who doth hear its summer cheer As it flitteth to and fro? so the freed spirit flies from its surrounding clay it steals away like the swallow from the skies whither wherefore doth it go tis all unknown we feel alone that a void is left below william howitt end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Flight of the Geese by Charles G. D. Roberts From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin The Flight of the Geese I hear the low wind wash the softening snow The low tide loiter down the shore The night, fulfilled with April forecast, hath no light The salt wave on the sedge-flat pulses slow through the hid furrows lisp in murmurous flow the thaws shy ministers and hark the height of heaven grows weird and look with unseen flight of strong hosts prophesying as they go high through the drenched and hollow night their wings beat northward hard on winter's trail the sound of their confused and solemn voices borne athwart the dark to their long arctic morn comes with a sanction and an awe profound, a boding of unknown, foreshadowed things. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lines to the Stormy Petrel by Anonymous From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia lines to the stormy petrel the lark sings for joy in her own loved land in the furrowed field by the breezes fanned and so revel we in the furrowed sea as joyous and glad as the lark can be on the placid breast of the inland lake the wild duck delights her pastime to take but the petrel braves the wild ocean waves his wing in the foaming billow he laves the halcyon loves in the noontide beam to follow his sport on the tranquil stream he fishes at ease in the summer breeze but we go angling in stormiest seas no song note have we but a piping cry that blends with the storm when the wind is high when the land birds wail we sport in the gale and merrily over the ocean we sail. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ode to Mother Carey's Chicken by Theodore Watts From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5 Nature, Part 2 
Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter as a narrator. Jason in Panama as the linnets. Lian Yao as the honeysuckles. And Sonia as Mother Carey. Ode to Mother Carey's Chicken on seeing a storm petrel in a cage on a cottage wall and releasing it. And gaze not at me, my poor unhappy bird, that sorrow is more than human in thine eye. Too deep already is my spirit stirred to see thee here, child of the sea and sky, cooped in a cage with food thou canst not eat, thy snowflake soiled, and soiled those conquering feet that walked the billows, while thy sweet, sweet, sweet proclaim the tempest nigh. Bird whom I welcomed while the sailors cursed, friend whom I blessed wherever keels may roam, prince of my childish dreams, whom mermaids nursed in purple of billows, silver of ocean foam, abashed I stand before the mighty grief that quells all other, sorrow's king and chief, to ride the wind and hold the sea in fief, then find a cage for home. From out thy jail thou seest yon heath and woods, but canst thou hear the birds or smell the flowers? Ah, no, those raindrops twinkling on the buds bring only visions of the salt sea showers. The sea! The linnets pipe from hedge and heath. The sea! The honeysuckles whisper and breathe and tumbling waves where those wild roses wreathe murmur from inland bowers these winds so soft to others how they burn the mavis sings with gurgle and ripple and plash to thee yon swallow sings a wheeling turn and when the rain recalls the briny lash old ocean's kiss thou lovest when thy sight is mocked with ocean's horses, Manes of white, the long and shadowy flanks, The shoulders bright, bright as the lightning's flash, When all these scents of heather and briar and wind, All kindly breaths of land shrub, flower and vine, Recall the sea scents, till thy feathered skin Tingles in answer to a dream of brine. When thou, remembering there thy royal birth, Dost see between the bars a world of dearth, Is there a grief, a grief on all the earth, So heavy and dark as thine? But I can buy thy freedom. I thank God, who loved thee more than albatross or gull, Loved thee when on the waves they footsteps trod, Dreamed of thee when, becalmed, we lay a hull. Tis I thy friend who once, a child of six, To find where Mother Carey fed her chicks, Climbed up the stranded punt, And with two sticks tried all in vain to scull. Thy friend who owed a paradise of storm, The little dreamer of the cliffs and coves, Who knew thy mother, saw her shadowy form behind the cloudy bastions where she moves and heard her call come for the welkin thickens and tempests mutter and the lightning quickens then starting from his dream would find the chickens were only blue rock doves thy friend who owed another paradise of calmer air a floating isle of fruit where sang the nereids on a breeze of spice, while Triton from afar would sound salute. There wast thou winging, though the skies were calm, for marvellous strains, as of the morning's sham, were struck by ripples round that isle of palm, whose shores were Carey's loot. For now to see thee here, my king, my king, far glittering memories mirrored in those eyes as if there shone within each iris ring an orbed world 
ocean and hills and skies those black wings ruffled whose triumphant sweep conquered in sport yea up the glimmering steep of highest billow down the deepest deep sported with victories to see thee here the coil of wilted weeds beneath those feet that danced on diamond spray rider of sportive ocean's rainless steeds winner in mother carey's sabbath fray when stung by magic of the witch's chant they rise each foamy crested combatant they rise and fall and leap and foam and gallop and pant till albatross sea swallow and cormorant would flee like doves away and shalt thou ride no more where thou hast ridden and feast no more in hyaline halls and caves master of mother carey's secrets hidden master most equal of the wind and waves who never save in stress of angriest blast asked ship for shelter never till at last the foam flakes hurled against the sloping masts slash thee like whirling glaives right home to fields no seam you ever kenned where scarce the great sea wanderer fares with thee i come to take thee nay tis i thy friend ah tremble not i come to set thee free I come to tear this cage from off this wall, And take thee hence to that fierce festival, Where billows march and winds are musical, Hymning the victor sea. Yea, lift thine eyes, my own can bear them now, Thou art free, thou art free. Ah, surely a bird can smile, dost know me petro dost remember how i fed thee in the wake for many a mile whilst thou wouldst pat the waves then rising take the morsel up and wheel about the wake thou art free thou art free but for thine own dear sake i keep thee caged a while away to sea no matter where the coast the road that turns to home turns never wrong where waves run high my bird will not be lost his home i know tis where the winds are strong where on her throne of billows rolling hoary and green and blue and splash with sunny glory far far from shore from farthest promontory the mighty mother sings the triumphs of her story sings to my bird the song end of poem this recording is in the public domain the grasshopper and cricket by john keats from the world's best poetry volume 5 nature part 2 read for librivox.org by jason in panama the grasshopper and cricket the poetry of earth is never dead when all the birds are faint with the hot sun and hide in cooling trees a voice will run from hedge to hedge about the new mown mead that is the grasshoppers he takes the lead in summer luxury he has never done with his delights for when tired out with fun he rests at ease beneath some pleasant weed the poetry of earth is ceasing never on a lone winter evening when the frost has wrought a silence from the stove there shrills the cricket's song in warmth increasing ever and seems to one in drowsiness half lost the grasshoppers among some grassy hills john keats end of poem this recording is in the public domain to the grasshopper and cricket by lee hunt from the world's best poetry volume five nature part two 
Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Yao. To the Grasshopper and Cricket Green little water in the sunny grass, Catching your heart up with the feel of June, Sole voice that's heard amidst the lazy noon, When even the bees lag at the summoning brass. And you, warm little housekeeper, who class with those who think the candles come too soon, loving the fire, and with your tricksome tune, nick the glad silent moments as they pass. O oh, sweet and tiny cousins that belong, one to the fields, the other to the hearth. Both have your sunshine, both, though small, are strong, at your clear hearts, and both seem given to earth, to sing in thoughtful ears this natural song. Indoors and out, summer and winter, mirth. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A soliloquy occasioned by the chirping of a grasshopper by Walter Hart from the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 2. Read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter a soliloquy occasioned by the chirping of a grasshopper happy insect ever blessed with more than mortal rest rosy dews the leaves among humble joys and gentle song wretched poet ever cursed with a life of lives the worst sad despondence restless fears endless jealousies and tears in the burning summer thou warblest on the verdant bough meditating cheerful play mindless of the piercing ray scorched in cupid's fervours i ever weep and ever die proud to gratify thy will ready nature waits thee still balmy wines to thee she pours weeping through the dewy flowers Rich as those by he be given to the thirsty sons of heaven. Yet, alas, we both agree, miserable thou like me. Each alike in youth rehearses gentle strains and tender verses. Ever wandering far from home, mindless of the days to come. Such as aged winter brings, trembling on his icy wings. Both alike at last we die. Thou art starved, and so am I. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To an Insect by Oliver Wendell Holmes From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama To an Insect I love to hear thine earnest voice wherever thou art hid, thou testy little dogmatist, thou pretty Katie did. Thou mindest me of gentle folks, old gentle folks are they, thou sayest an undisputed thing in such a solemn way. Thou art a female Katie did, I know it by the trill that quivers through thy piercing notes, so petulant and shrill. I think there is a knot of you beneath the hollow tree, a knot of spincer katydids. Do katydids drink tea? Oh, tell me where did Katy live, and what did Katy do? And was she very fair and young, and yet so wicked too? Did Katy love a naughty man, or kiss more cheeks than one? I warrant Kitty did no more than many a Kate has done. Oliver Wendell Holmes End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Fly Occasioned by a fly drinking out of the author's cup by William Oldys From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin The Fly Busy Curious, thirsty fly, drink with me and drink as I, freely welcome to my cup. 
Couldst thou sip and sip it up? Make the most of life you may, Life is short and wears away. Both alike, both mine and thine, Hasten quick to their decline. Thine's a summer, mine no more, Though repeated to three score. Three score summers, when they're gone, Will appear as short as one. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To the Humble Bee by Ralph Waldo Emerson From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama To the Humble Bee Burly dozing humble bee Where thou art is climb for me Let me chase thy waving lines Far off heats through seas to seek I will follow thee alone, thou animated torrid zone, zigzag steerer, desert cheerer. Let me chase thy waving lines, keep me nearer, me thy hearer, singing over shrubs and vines. Insect lover of the sun, joy of thy dominion, sailor of the atmosphere, swimmer through the waves of air voyager of light and noon epicurean of june wait i prithee till i come within earshot of thy hum all without is martyrdom when the south wind in may days with a net of shining haze silvers the horizon wall and with softness touching all tints the human countenance with the color of romance and infusing subtle heats turns the sod to violets. Thou in sunny solitudes rover of the underwoods, the green silence dost displace with thy mellow breezy base. Hot midsummer's petted crone, sweet to me thy drowsy tone tells of countless sunny hours, long days, and solid banks of flowers on gulfs of sweetness without bound in indian wildernesses found of syrian peace immortal leisure firmest cheer and bird-like pleasure aught unsavory or unclean hath my insect never seen but violets and bilberry bells maple sap and daffodils grass with green flag half-mast high succory to match the sky columbine with horn of honey scented fern and agrimony clover catchfly adder's tongue and briar rose dwelt among all beside was unknown waste all was picture as he passed wiser far than human seer yellow breeched philosopher seeing only what is fair sipping only what is sweet thou dost mock at fate and care leave the chaff and take the wheat when the fierce northwestern blast cools sea and land so far and fast thou already slumberest deep woe and want thou canst outsleep want and woe which torture us thy sleep makes ridiculous ralph waldo emerson end of poem this recording is in the public domain Wild Honey by Maurice Thompson From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5 Nature, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org By Thomas Peter Wild Honey Where hints of racy sap and gum Out of the old dark forest come Where birds their beaks like hammers wield And pith is pierced And bark is peeled where the green walnut's outer rind gives precious bitterness to the wind there lurks the sweet creative power as lurks the honey in the flower in winter's bud that bursts in spring in nut of autumn's ripening an acrid bulb beneath the mould sleeps the elixir strong and old that rosicrucians sought in vain life that renews itself again 
what bottled perfume is so good as fragrance of split tulip wood what fabled drink of god or muse was rich as purple mulberry juice and what school polished gem of thought is like the ruin from nature caught he is a poet strong and true who loves wild thyme and honeydew and like a brown bee works and sings with morning freshness on his wings and a golden burden on his thighs the pollen dust of centuries end of poem this recording is in the public domain a more ancient mariner by bliss carmen from the world's best poetry volume five nature part two read for librivox dot org by sonia a more ancient mariner the swarthy bee is a buccaneer a burly velveted rover who loves the booming wind in his ear as he sails the seas of clover a waif of the goblin pirate crew with not a soul to deplore him he steers for the open verge of blue with the filmy world before him his flimsy sails abroad on the wind are shivered with fairy thunder on a line that sings to the light of his wings he makes for the lands of wonder he harries the ports of the hollyhocks and levies on poor sweet briar he drinks the whitest wine of flocks and the rose is his desire he hangs in the willows a night and a day he rifles the buckwheat patches then battens his store of pelf galore under the tautest hatches he woos the poppy and weds the peach in vagal's daffodilly and then like a tramp abandons each for the gorgeous canada lily there's not a soul in the garden world but wishes the day were shorter when mariner b puts out to sea with the wind in the proper quarter or so they say but i have my doubts for the flowers are only human and the valour and gold of a vagrant bold were always dear to woman he dares to boast along the coast the beauty of highland heather how he and she with night on the sea lay out on the hills together he pilfers from every port of the wind from april to golden autumn but the thieving ways of his mortal days are those his mother taught him his morals are mixed but his will is fixed he prospers after his kind and follows an instinct compass sure the philosophers call blind and that is why when he comes to die he'll have an easier sentence than someone i know who thinks just so and then leaves room for repentance he never could box the compass round he doesn't know port from starboard but he knows the gates of the sundown straits where the choicest goods are harboured he never could see the rule of three but he knows a rule of thumb better than euclid's better than yours or the teacher's yet to come he knows the smell of the hydromel as if two and two were five and hides it away for a year and a day in his own hexagonal hive out in the day haphazard alone booms the old vagrant hummer with only his whim to pilot him through the splendid vast of summer he steers and steers on the slant of the gale like the fiend or van der decken and there's never an unknown course to sail but his crazy log can reckon he drones along with his rough sea song and the throat of a salty tar this devil may care till he makes his lair by the light of a yellow star he looks like a gentleman lives like a lord and works like a trojan hero then loafs all winter upon his hoard with the mercury at zero End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To a Louse by Robert Burns. 
from the world's best poetry volume five nature part two read for LibriVox.org by sonia to a louse on seeing one on a lady's bonnet at church ha where are you gone ye crawling fairly your impudence protects you sairly i canna say but ye strunt rarely over gauze and lace though faith i fear ye dine but sparely on sich a place ye ugly creepin blasted wonner detested shunned by sound and sinner how dare you set your feet upon her sa fine a lady go somewhere else and seek your dinner on some poor body swith in some beggar's half it squattle there you may creep and sprawl and sprattle with either kindred jumping cattle in shoals and nations where hall nor bane never door unsettle your thick plantations now hold you there you're out o sight below the federal snug and tight now faith ye yet ye'll no be right till ye've got on it the very tapmost towering height o mrs bonnet my sooth right bold ye set your nose out as plump and grey as any groset oh for some rank mercurial roset or fell red smeddum i'd give you such a hearty dose of it would dress your drodem i would not be surprised to spy you on an old wife's flannel toy or abling some bit doddy boy on swiley coat but mrs fine lunardi fie how dare you do it oh jenny do not toss your head and set your beauties all abread ye little ken what cursed speed the blast is makin the wings and finger ends i dread unnoticed taken oh what some power the gifty give us to see ourselves as others see us it would from money a blunder free us and foolish notion what airs in dress and gait would leave us and even devotion end of poem this recording is in the public domain to a mouse on turning her up in her nest with the plough november seventeen eighty five by robert burns from the world's best poetry volume five nature part two read for librivox dot org by craig franklin to a mouse we sleek it cowering timorous beastie oh what a panic's in thy breastie thou needn't start our see hasty wi bickering brattle i would be laith to run and chase thee wi murdering paddle i'm truly sorry man's dominion has broken nature's social union and justified that ill opinion which makes thee startle at me thy poor earth-born companion and fellow mortal i doubt now whiles but thou may thieve what then poor beastie thou mine leave a demon icker in a thrave sa my request i'll get a blessing with the lave and never miss it thy wee bit housey too in ruin it's silly was the winds are strewin and neithin new to big a newn of foggage green and bleak december's winds ensuing bit snell and keen they saw the fields laid bare and waste and weary winter coming fast and cosy here beneath the blast thou thought to dwell till crash the cruel coulter passed out through thy cell that wee bit heap o' leaves and stibble has cost thee many a weary nibble now thou's turned out for a thy trouble but house or hold to thole the winter's sleepy dribble and cramlage could but moosey thou art no thy lane in proving foresight may be vain the best laid schemes of mice and men gang after glee and leave us not but grief and pain for promised joy still thou art blessed compared with me the present only toucheth thee but och i backward cast my ee on prospects drear and forward though i canna see i guess and fear End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
the housekeeper by charles lamb from the world's best poetry volume five part two nature the housekeeper the frugal snail with forecast of repose carries his house with him where'er he goes peeps out and if there comes a shower of rain retreats to his small domicile again touch but a tip of him a horn tis well he curls up in his sanctuary shell he's his own landlord his own tenant stay long as he will he dreads no quarter day himself he boards and lodges both invites and feasts himself sleeps with himself o nights he spares the upholsterer trouble to procure chattels himself is his own furniture and his sole riches wheresoe'er he roam knock when you will he's sure to be at home charles lamb end of poem this recording is in the public domain remonstrance with the snails by anonymous from the world's best poetry volume five nature part two read for librivox dot org by craig franklin remonstrance with the snails ye little snails with slippery tails who noiselessly travel along this gravel by a silvery path of slime unsightly i learn that you visit my pierrots nightly felonious your visit i guess and i give you this warning that every morning i'll strictly examine the pods and if one i hit on with slaver or spit on your next meal will be with the gods i own you're a very ancient race and greece and babylon were amid you have tenanted many a royal dome and dwelt in the oldest pyramid the source of the nile oh you have been there in the ark was your floodless bed on the moonless night of marathon you crawled o'er the mighty dead but still though i reverence your ancestries i don't see why you should nibble my peas the meadows are yours the hedgerow and brook you may bathe in the dews at morn by the aged sea you may sound your shells on the mountains erect your horn the fruits and the flowers are your rightful dowers then why in the name of wonder should my six pierrots be the only cause to excite your midnight plunder i have never disturbed your slender shells you have hung around my aged walk and each might have sat till he died in his fat beneath his own cabbage stalk but now you must fly from the soil of your sires then put on your liveliest crawl and think of your poor little snails at home now orphans or emigrants all utensils domestic and civil and social i give you an evening to pack up but if the moon of this night does not rise on your flight to-morrow i'll hang each man jack up you'll think of my peas and your thievish tricks with tears of slime when crossing the sticks end of poem this recording is in the public domain the tiger by william blake from the world's best poetry volume 5 nature part 2 read for librivox.org by thomas peter the tiger 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 burning bright in the forests of the night what immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry in what distant deeps or skies burn the fire of thine eyes on what wings dare he aspire what the hand dare seize the fire and what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thine heart and when thy heart began to beat what dread hand and what dread feet what the hammer 
what the chain in what furnace was thy brain what the anvil what dread grasp dare its deadly terrors clasp when the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears did he smile his work to see did he who made the lamb make thee tiger tiger burning bright in the forests of the night what immortal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry end of poem this recording is in the public domain the lion's ride from the german of ferdinand freilichrath from the world's best poetry volume five nature part two read for librivox.org by lian yao the lion's ride the lion is the desert's king through his domain so wide right swiftly and right royally this night he means to ride by the sedgy brink where the wild herds drink close couches the grim chief the trembling sycamore above whispers with every leaf at evening on the table mount when ye can see no more the changeful play of signals gay when the gloom is speckled o'er with kraal fires when the kafer wends home through the lone karoo when the boshbok in the thicket sleeps and by the stream the gnu then bend your gaze across the waste what see ye the giraffe majestic stalks towards the lagoon the turbid lymph to quaff with outstretched neck and tongue adust he kneels him down to cool his hot thirst with a welcome draught from the foul and brackish pool a rustling sound a roar a bound the lion sits astride upon his giant courser's back. Did ever king so ride? Had ever king a steed so rare? Comparisons of state to match the dappled skin whereon that rider sits elate. In the muscles of the neck, his teeth are plunged with the ravenous greed. His tawny mane is tossing round the withers of the steed. Upleaping with a hollow yell of anguish and surprise, Away, away, in wild dismay, the camelopard flies. His feet of wings, see how he springs across the moonlit plain. As from their sockets they would burst, his glaring eyeballs strain. In thick black streams of purling blood, full fast his life is fleeting. The stillness of the desert hears his heart's tumultuous beating. Like the cloud that, through the wilderness, the path of israel traced like an airy phantom dull and wan a spirit of the waste from the sandy sea uprising as the water spout from ocean a whirling cloud of dust keeps pace with a courser's fiery motion croaking companion of their flight the vulture whirs on high below the terror of the fold the panther fierce and sly and hyenas foul round greys at prow join in the horrid race by the footprints wet with gore and sweat their monarch's course they trace they see him on his living throne and quake with fear the while with claws of steel he tears piecemeal his cushions painted pile on on no pause no rest off while life and strength remain the steed by such a rider backed may madly plunge in vain reeling upon the desert's verge he falls and breathes his last the courser stained with dust and foam is the rider's fell repast o'er madagascar eastward far a faint flush is descried thus nightly o'er his broad domain the king of beasts doth ride End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Fodder Time from Songs of Toil from the German of Carmen Silva, Queen of Romania, translation of John Eliot Bowen. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 2. Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin. Fodder Time How sweet the manger smells, the cows all listen with outstretched necks and with impatient lowing they greet the clover their content now showing and how they lick their noses till they glisten the velvet-coated beauties do not languish beneath the morning's golden light that's breaking the unexhausted spring of life awaking their golden eyes of velvet full of anguish they patiently endure their pains bestowing their sympathy the other cows are ruing their unproductive udders and renewing at milking time their labour and their lowing and now i must deceive the darling bossy with hand in milk must make it suck my finger its tender lips cling close like joys that linger and feel so warm with dripping white and flossy this very hand my people with devotion do kiss which paints and plays and writes moreover i would it had done naught but pile the clover to feed the kine that know no base emotion end of poem this recording is in the public domain the ox by josue carducci translated from the italian by frank sewell from the world's best poetry volume five nature part two read for librivox dot org by sonia the ox from the poesie i love thee pious ox a gentle feeling of vigour and of peace thou givest my heart how solemn like a monument thou art over wide fertile fields thy calm gaze stealing unto the yoke with grave contentment kneeling to man's quick work thou dost thy strength impart he shouts and goads and answering thy smart thou turnst on him thy patient eyes appealing from thy broad nostrils black and wet arise thy breath's soft fumes and on the still air swells like happy hymn thy lowing mellow strain in the grave sweetness of thy tranquil eyes of emerald broad and still reflected dwells all the divine green silence of the plain end of poem this recording is in the public domain folding the flocks by francis beaumont and john fletcher from the world's best poetry volume five nature part two read for librivox dot org by jason in panama folding the flocks shepherds all and maidens fair fold your flocks up for the air gins to thicken and the sun already his great course hath run see the dewdrops how they kiss every little flower that is hanging on their velvet heads like a string of crystal beads see the heavy clouds low falling and bright hesperus down calling the dead night from underground at whose rising mists unsound damps and vapors fly apace and hover o'er the smiling face of these pastures where they come striking dead both bud and bloom therefore from such danger lock every one his loved flock and let your dogs lie loose without lest the wolf come as a scout from the mountain and ere day bear a lamb or kid away or the crafty thievish fox break upon your simple flocks to secure yourself from these be not too secure in ease so shall you good shepherds prove and deserve your master's love now good night may sweetest slumbers and soft silence fall in numbers on your eyelids so farewell 
Thus I end my evening knell. Beaumont and Fletcher End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.